of the Young Jerks. We've got an awesome show uh, lined up for you here today. We're going to have uh, all kinds. We're going to cover the gamut. Uh, we're going to go over uh, a little bit about our last couple of weeks uh, show, talking about the Boston bombing uh, and, uh, you know, reviewing and uh, having a special, very special guest on. Uh, yes. Mike, if you want to tell them uh, more about Well, I mean, I, the first thing I, I think we should say is welcome back to everyone from the snow. That's right. The yeah. blizzard. <laughs> That's right. If you haven't dug yourself out yet, you know, warm up and... Uh, Got some coffee, listen to the show. And that's what you should be doing right now, relaxing and uh, listening. And, you know, my name is Mike Ann. His name is Frank Capone, of course. We got a lot of people in the studio. We got some special, uh, some guests live in the studio in the second half uh, from Witch Doctor. We also have Healthy Heady Lifestyle here. We have Nicole Snow, uh, Nikki Smokes, uh, a.k.a. Uh, from Mass Patients Advocacy Alliance. So we have a lot going on today's show. Um, but just kick it off, Frank. That's right. Yeah. We have a uh, special guest. Got a drum roll? Yeah. All right, that drum roll kind of stunk. <laughs> I'll work on that next time. You better work on it. <laughs> we need a soundboard, we'll man. Get it. We do. <laughs> we have a special guest on the phone. Um, she's a you know great musician, songwriter. Uh, she is probably uh, most famous for starting out. You know her career playing in the subways and then playing other you know musician songs and and. Uh, really helping promote them by playing their, their music, covering their music, uh, where those musicians started wanting to play with her and perform with her and re- record songs together. Uh, some of the people she's recorded with is Elliot Smith. People know, know Elliot Smith, of course. Uh, she was also famously friends with uh, Kurt Cobain from no- Nirvana. She's from Who's Salem. That guy? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> she's from Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, I, I love her and her music and just uh, who she is and it's uh, my honor to introduce Mary Lou Lord. Hey! hey. Yeah. Hi Mary Lou. Hey you guys, what's up? Wow, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm totally shoveled out. Um, feeling a little bit of the after effects. My back is killing me. Um, but, but you know, all is well and um it's good to uh, have a little bit of Salem in the house. I'm from Salem, and good luck to the witch doctor guys. I, I ju- I've driven by there. I'm like, what is that? And uh, now I know a little bit more about what's going on there. It's very cool. Yes, it is. And uh, we hope to get to find out more about their shop today because I, I I've, I've done the same thing. I've driven by it, and I've never been in. Now I'm definitely going to have to check it out. Give us our, give us some feedback, and I, and as soon as I heard from you, I, I was like, you got to come on the show and talk about this. <laughs> I was like dying to have you on, and I know that you're a little nervous about kind of re, you know branching out and, and going into a different area that that is a little bit controversial, a little bit close to the bone for a lot of people here in Boston and Cambridge. But what what did you think listening to Alina for mm-hmm. you know for instance, first of all, I know you've talked to her also. And also, Russ Baker, what did you think about those shows and the questions that we were bringing up? I think that they are extremely brave um, and extremely articulate, and they they know what's going on here. Um, I've followed it since day one, uh, like we all have. But I've, I've, you know, I I heard. I'll, I'll explain why I'm so involved in this, actually, and it's you know. It's not something that I would typically follow or care about or get, you know, I'm just a regular Bostonian. But, um, I, I, I'll explain a little bit later. But getting back to, um, Alina and Russ, I think that they're incredibly brave and they're incredibly patriotic. Um, and, you know, I think that they're very, very, um, well versed in exactly what's going on. And, you know, thinking about, Elena, you know, somebody might just think, oh, this chick from Russia or whatever, you know, Dagestan, whatever. But she has actually fought for our country. You know, she's a soldier for America, you know, and and we need to respect people like her. You know, she's as patriotic as they come. I mean, she's fought for our country. And uh, just knowing things like that, knowing all the little details that a lot of other people might really, you know, they bypass them, and I don't understand why. I know. It's, so it's, I, thought, I thought it was great. I thought that, you know, she's so articulate, and she's so well-versed, and I love her. I think she's amazing. Yeah, she. I, I think so, too. I think she's, just from my little experience with her and speaking with her and having her on the show, I have no doubt that she really believes in, uh, you know, what she's saying and the questions that she's asking, and I don't see why... We can't kind of get some answers on this. This is her son-in-law, 
And we really don't know what happened. We have this one-sided account that's changed a million times. Yep. It's just uh, it's mm-hmm. not right. I mean, she needs more closure than that. And the way that they're that she's treated and her family's treated, it's like they're the victim. Why are they being treated like this? Why is she being treated like this when she was in the U.S. Army? I mean, it, it, there's no right. reason that she should be treated like the way that she's been treated by the government, by the FBI. Right. You know, I don't know exactly when she moved here, but she moved here, you know, for a better life because all hell is breaking loose over there. And, you know, you think, oh, come to America, you know, the land of hopes and dreams and, you know, uh, the, the uphold, the upholding of the Constitution. And, you know, it's not communist. And, yeah, we're going to America. And then come to America and her entire life has been destroyed. You know, the, a country that she fought for. Uh, regardless of where she's from, um, you know, uh, her, it, it's just, I just, I get so upset. It's just absolutely not right. Yeah. it's, a, it's a, And, and her, how her entire life has been upheaved. She had a nice life. She was, I think she was a pharmacist and, you know, a soldier active duty whenever she was called to go, whatever she did, I'm not exactly sure, but her daughter moved back to Russia. Um, and her, her whole life has been turned inside out and upside down by this. Yes, it has. Um, I know, I know that, uh, you also have looked into a lot of the discrepancies that we talked about with Russ Baker about the timeline in that night and ha- also yes. listened to the, to the scanners. And you had a lot of the same questions that I did. Um, I mean, we, we should talk about some of those things. I know that you had also heard on the scanner that, you know, proven that I'm not crazy, that I did hear them. You heard the same thing about the state police SUV. Of course, of course. That Russ was kind and of shocked that, that I brought that up uh, last week. Tell me about that. I mean, do you what do you recall about that night? Well, what had happened was, you know, I was on Facebook, like a lot of other people, and someone sent me a link. I think it was right around 1030 on April 18th. Uh, it was a Thursday night. And it was in April, um, and I got this link and it, from a friend, and he said, hey, the 7-Eleven in Central Square uh, has just been robbed. And I'm like, well, who the hell would rob that 7-Eleven on a Thursday night at 1030? I mean, you get the can tab there and all the goons out front of the can tab. You, get, you, know, you know what? You can picture it in your mind, what Central Square looks like on a Thursday night in April at 1030, right? And so... I was like, that's really weird that somebody would rob that 7-Eleven at that time and and kind of get away with it. So what had happened, I got the scanner link. I heard, you know, that they were looking for the suspect. They had a description of the suspect. They shut the subway down. And I continued listening because I thought, oh, this is interesting. You know, I used to live in Billy Wayne's apartment, and it was Right, basically across the street from there. So when I lived there for a year, that was my 7-Eleven. So I could picture everything in my head, uh, what was what it looked like there. And um, so about 15 minutes later, I guess it was, there was a call on Scanner for an officer to report to McDerm- McDermott Court because it, because it was loud banging on a barrel or something, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> and then on the scanner, right after that, you hear, officer down, officer down. That's and, right. And it was Officer Collier. Uh, I think it was the officer named Hennigan, or Henniger, actually, that uh, who was uh, Collier's boss or supervisor that found him. Um, and so you, I started to understand, okay, this is an MIT police officer that just got shot and they were doing, they called the EMTs and they were doing work on him. And then about maybe 15 minutes later, you found out that he had died. Uh, and then <laughs> I kept listening and confusion upon confusion, uh, it came in the call and it said that there was report of a uh, stolen police SUV from 3rd Street in Cambridge. And I was like, wow, that's really weird because that's really close to the police station. You know, and what's interesting to me is that only someone from our area, from Boston or Cambridge or Watertown or Walton, would really understand how this timeline is connected and how the anomalies 
don't really make sense. And so when I was listening to the scanner, I I kept listening, listening, and a lot of things just didn't make much sense to me. Um, you know, first we heard that the carjack happened at 3rd Street. We heard it was a police SUV. And then it was, oh, no, it wasn't. It was carjack on 60 Brighton Ave. I mean, how many people in Austin have lived at 60 Brighton Ave and... You know, a lot of college students have, are familiar with that building. So regardless of that, you hear then that they started showing pictures of what everyone thought was the 7-Eleven, but it was a shell station, and it was on the corner there of uh, River Street and Memorial Drive. Um, and then across the street is the mobile. And so reportedly the story went that they had carjacked uh, after they shot Collier, about 15 minutes later, they carjacked an Asian man named Danny. Danny. <laughs> yeah, Danny. And so they carjacked Danny, and they uh, drove off from 60 Brighton Ave in Austin uh, with the younger brother in a green Honda following, right? So supposedly they drove, they didn't go to the shell then, they drove to Watertown and then they did something, there was an exchange of something from the Green Honda that had been following the whole time into the, the black uh, Mercedes SUV owned by Danny that was carjacked. They moved something from the Green Honda into the, into the uh, Mercedes, and then they drove back. Why they did this? This is when all the bells went off in my head. This is weird. Drove back to Cambridge, closer to where they supposedly Started. shot Officer Collier, yep. uh, and they went to the Shell Station across from that double tree where they probably had taken that left onto Soldier's Field to go to Watertown the first time, and then they did something in Watertown on, I think, Fairfield Street. They settled around with the car, came back in only the Mercedes, went to that Shell Station, um, and you see in the pictures, the younger brothers got Doritos, Red Bull, and a packet of Marlboro Lights. Terrorists. And that's when the Asian Danny like, supposedly made his move. And uh, while well, the older brother, um, Carolyn, was fiddling around with the GPS and choked out the younger one was in buying the Doritos and the snacks, <laughs> he took off from the car and he ran across the street into the mobile, which is when the owner called the police, and that's when they hightailed it back to Watertown, where yeah. they just were. And so I'm thinking, this really does not make any yeah. sense. But you know, it doesn't make and, sense, too, on the green car thing, because if they were so worried, like, they had a car. They could have driven mm -hmm. to New York in, in, in the green Honda, oh, Dokar's right. car. But yeah. if they were so, so afraid they, that they were going to get identified <laughs> with Dokar's car, why are they still driving, driving around, around with so. it? It doesn't well, make any sense, think, and we know that, think the, yeah. that. what is is that Shell station on the corner of River and Memorial the only gas station? And when they yeah. interviewed Danny, yeah, the, you know, they said, well, "Well, what happened?" And and he said, "Well, I I couldn't really understand what was going on, but I understood one word: Manhattan." And it's like, yeah. are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, so if they're on their way to Manhattan, why in the world wouldn't they have just found a closer gas station, jumped on the mass pike, and yeah. hightailed it out of there? What were they coming back to that shell, that particular shell for? And not only uh, did Danny say that the older brother never got out of the car, but in some of the pictures from that shell station, you see the older brother looking like he's reading something on the door, looking very casual. It's not like they're in a big hurry. I mean, if, you're, if you've just bombed a town, right, and you've just c killed an officer, supposedly, and carjacked a car, would you really be stopping for snacks like Red Bull and, and butts and, and, and chips? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's crazy. And, and so it doesn't fit. The uh, what Danny's narrative is because he said that the old brother never got out of the car, and obviously we see that he did in the pictures. And also, I just want to say that when Danny, the carjack victim, ran across the street to the mobile, not a lot of people know it, but the three uh, friends that uh, supposedly found the car's backpack 
with the fireworks in it, they lived in that building above that mobile. You know, there's like a big, huge apartment building attached to that mobile. Like, the, the connections are just too odd. And I honestly think that there was something more to this narrative than what we've been told. Yeah, definitely. I mean, even that night later on, that night in Watertown, um, we've seen pictures of, like, the naked guy. The naked man, yeah. yeah. What's up with him? And then uh, we also saw uh, another guy that looked like it was Tamalin. Yep. I mean, we don't really know because those pictures, but they had somebody else. And, the, the, like, all these things happened that night that just don't make sense. They don't make any sense. And, and to hear later on in the night the SUV that, you know, they, that they said that they were chasing – and then that's not in any reports. It's nowhere to be found. It's, it's the whole thing is right. really and, bizarre. Yeah, and then the, in some other reports, there was actually a, a, a stolen um, black pickup truck that came into the picture somehow. And I read about maybe ten months ago. You know, the the heading said Watertown still has questions, and they showed this black pickup truck that was supposedly owned by the police and it ha- and it was riddled with bullet holes and what what you know you you hear in the narrative is that everything happened on Dexter Street and Laurel Street that's where the shootout went down and uh there's interviews that I've seen with the with the eight officers that were first on scene you know and there was no chase really because the black SUV was just there. And I think it was Officer Reynolds uh, was the first person to come across that that uh, that black Mercedes that Cambridge had notified them after the Asian man, Danny, went to the mobile and, you know, said I'd just been carjacked. So they, they either pinged the car uh, with a low jack or Danny's phone. I don't know. Uh, this is all hearsay anyway. And they came across the black Mercedes on, uh, I think it was on Laurel and Dexter, and that's when the first police officer approached that vehicle, and he said that the driver, who he claimed to be Tamerlan, just started shooting at him randomly. But what you hear on the scanner is completely different, and the entire narrative was really going on on other streets, like Adams Street and School Street and Mount Auburn, and that's where the real... Uh, action happened and you know it makes me wonder you know i think about that kid uh sunil chapathi uh the the brown university student that he'd been missing for a month and he turned up two days later after they you know caught uh jakar and the boat and the whole thing it's like really and you know i've looked at pictures of that kid and you know with longer hair in a fuzzy photograph, he could have definitely passed for Chokar Sanayas. And there's so many little anomalies here that make me angry. And what makes me the most angry is that people absolutely, you know, I've asked people, they think I'm crazy, you know, and I don't think I'm crazy. I've never followed anything like this before. I've never really been interested in any kind of scandal or conspiracy. And what, um, what I said to them, I said, you know, what do you think? And they're like, oh, of course he's guilty. And I'm like, well, okay, well, why do you think so? And they're like, because we saw him at the marathon in the picture with a backpack. And I'm like, well, how many other people had backpacks? And they're like, well, that's true, but, but we saw him put it, we saw pictures of him putting it down. I'm like, no, you didn't. And they're like, well, we saw this movie, you know, made for a TV movie. And, and I'm like, that wasn't real. That was, that was not real. That was a movie made for TV. And it's made to look very much like it's real because it's fuzzy and grainy and looks like CCTV. And um, and so what I, you know, and I say, so how do you believe it? And they're like, because I saw it on TV. And to me, that's really not good enough. And I, I'm proud of this city. I love this city. I come from a long line of first responders, you know, state troopers and firefighters. I'm, I'm just as blue collar as the rest of them. And I, it, I have no disrespect at all for anyone because, you know, they are our heroes, absolutely. And I entirely believe everything, but I don't quite believe this narrative. And I don't know why, and I think more people should be questioning it. And especially uh, Watertown, because 
apart from the victims, the victims' families, I think that Watertown got it the worst. And if Watertown knew that this is not going to go to trial because, um, I think it's Ortiz, she has said Watertown is irre- irrelevant. It's not going to be added into this trial. So a lot of people say, well, everything will come out in trial, but it actually won't because it's not going to make it that far. Yeah. And we uh, don't get to see any of the evidence either, right? It. You know, no all the evidence is being and, shut down, suppressed, not yeah. allowed to Absolutely. be presented in exactly. view. Yeah, and I think that there are people in Watertown that want re- that want answers, regardless of. And this is, you know, has nothing to do with me thinking that he's guilty or he's innocent. This is for all of us, you know. This is our. This is screwing with the Constitution of of the United States. This is a Patriot Act that's been placed in, and if this happens, it's actually mind-blowing because it's changing our Constitution. It's changing, uh, you know, the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment. It's, it's really, it's not cool. And I think that Boston are stronger than that. We're yeah. smarter than that. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. It's making us forget our recent past, too, like the FBI and Whitey Bulger. The fact is that we have this narrative, you know, we, we there's a who, what, why story that Frank's got right in front of him that he's going to bring up in a second, but it's like the evidence is presented one side and then they change the story. It's not even real what the people have been. They think they know all these jurors that are going up there. They're saying crazy stuff. There's no they have to suspend the trial selection process because Bostonians are brainwashed. They can't even think logically about this. They're saying the most ridiculous things in court when they're asked as jurors about things that aren't true. They think it's true. They think they saw it on TV. Frank, you want to follow? Yeah, up but on? they but they didn't, you know, and and it's also social conditioning, you know, yeah. when it's perfectly acceptable for the police to tell you not to come out of your house, and that we're gonna come and we're gonna we're gonna pull you, we're gonna pull your grandmother, Boston we're gonna pull your strong. kids, we're gonna scream at you while waving automatic weapons in your face to tell you to keep your hands up while you're walking out of your own house. That's social conditioning, and that's what you know people of Watertown had to be subjected to. But I mean, in terms of this, you know, like this Russ Baker or who, what, why, you know, story, um, it talks about how everyone's talking about the fact that there's a video, right? And there's still pictures of Johar uh, dropping a bag, you know, in front of the restaurant, and you can see it. The Lord and Taylor, you know, video shows it, but that doesn't actually exist because that video was never ever released to the public, you know, and and so. Like how 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 do you how do you deal with that? Like how how do we move forward from that? And like I know what you're saying. People think you know you're crazy. When I talk to a, about it with people too, they're like, no, that's not true. That's not true. But like when you have that conversation, like how do you break down that wall with somebody to kind of bring them around to your side? And you can't. Mary Lou, did we lose? You? I think we might have lost Mary Lou. Did we lose the call, producer man? I think we might have. No. We yeah. Awesome. All right, Mary Lou. Thank you for um, maybe she can yeah, call, she'll back. call back if you can. If you're listening. Can we try um, giving her a call right now. We're going to try calling her back and get yeah. her on the line. Yeah. So but no, like I was saying, like that that's like a social conditioning kind of a thing. Right. It is where it's like people. That's just an acceptable thing now. You know, yeah. now when it snows. And there's also like, a, you know, part of that. Uh, Mary Lou was bringing this up to me the other day. There's that that whole movie that came out. This supposedly documentary for the yeah. BBC. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Mary Lou, are you back on the phone? No, she's no, still okay. um, It's uh, the documentary that came out, and they recreated some of it to make it look real, but it wasn't real. Oh, that's like the the Megalodon, you know, the movies that they yes. made on the Discovery Channel. And it's it's like the the. Are you there, Mary Lou? The mailbox is okay. no, she's she's not. Not. Okay. It's it's the key time. point. Hang it up. Yeah, it, it's the key point in the story, um, where they're basically making it look like here's the kids putting down the bomb. And they show it as real, and it's fake. It's recreated. Right. Well, in terms of the backpacks themselves, I mean, you can look at the video of the surveillance footage. We'll, call. we'll, of, call. we'll take the call. Hello, caller. Hi, is this Mary Lou? Hello? Hi, hello. is this Mary Lou again? Hey, I'm back. Awesome. <laughs> I, don't, awesome. I don't know what happened. So, yeah, so I was asking um, when, I'm not sure what point you lost me, so I'll just kind of double back a little bit, but when you're having those kind of conversations with people about the boss of bombing and about the fact that you have questions and that you don't necessarily believe the official story, like, when people are kind of like, no, you're crazy, like, how do, how do you combat that? You know, how, how do when you, they say they how do you saw overcome the, they, that? They saw the tape, but the tape isn't real. <laughs> no. How do you deal no, with that? No, I, I just, you know, again, it's, 
not a thing where I think he's guilty or innocent or anything. Again, this is a questioning of uh, how much information we've been told and shown, and I don't think that it's enough to warrant uh, us believing he's guilty or not. Um, we've been shown a few fuzzy pictures, and we've been led to believe uh, this or that. But I think that this needs a fair trial. And one of the things, if you can still hear me, okay. that Elena pointed out, can you guys still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you very well. You sound great. Right. One of the things that she said that I thought was really interesting was about the three friends, Philippus, I think, and, you know, the other, the, the three friends, right? Yeah. She's like, I think that they're putting the apple cart before the horse here because these kids were, um, you know, found guilty of something that hasn't had a trial yet. How can that be? You know, usually I would think, and I'm not a lawyer, I know nothing about the law, I'm just a, a you know, a resident of Boston area, and I would think that if these kids are going to be guilty, they have to be guilty of the, th of the thing that was, you know, that they found these two friends guilty of. I think that that should be after the fact. And if they're saying, well, they obstructed, uh, you know, the, the evidence or whatever, you know, it's just like, well, well, do the trial. You know, everyone's going to write to a speedy trial, and now all this cluster confusion with them finding an unbiased jury. Really? This is a national thing, that, that TV movie thing. I think it's called, like, The Hunt for the Boston Bombers. Or I mean, the guy that, that directed that... He he did, he directed or wrote for like Paranormal Witness and The Craft and The Exorcist and like I said the actor guy that's playing Joe Carr in that movie he's an actor and in when you see what looks like he's on Boylston Street placing the backpack down that is not him. That is not real footage. They've mixed it in with real people. Reenacted. Uh, yeah. Right. You, you know yeah, what I mean? BBC. So this kid, this kid, he, he's a kid. He's in Lady Gaga's video playing John Lennon of all things. Yeah. You know, it's like, come on, really? And uh, I, I, it's just beyond me that it's legal even to uh, have the trial at all after all of that uh, meddling with uh, people's emotions and p and the evidence and. You know, I, I can't even believe that this child it, isn't even thrown out, you know, with all the, the jumble of uh, information that we've been given. Well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, and I'm sure you'd agree with this. Like, if there's evidence, like, what is, what is the state afraid of for showing us the evidence? Like, why can't we be treated like adults and just be, be shown, like, all right, here's the video. Here's the dash cam right. footage. You know, right, here's right. you know what we found on his laptop. You know, where are the pictures of the apartment exactly. they had in Cambridge supposedly, where they were making the the, the bombs? Like, where are those pictures right. that they supposedly had to lock down a whole block in Cambridge so they could clear out the apartment from with explosives? But, you know, the actions we've seen is just the opposite. They're they're looking to shut down anything, anything right. from getting out. They've, they've I know. confiscated I every. Uh, recording device. They've and I think they destroy these things. And they've shut down every witness, every friend. They've gone after them, just like Alina was I saying. Think, so I true. think that the people of Boston deserve uh, to to see this evidence. And I think if they did show it uh, and and had a little bit more of a speedy trial, I think maybe they could save the state a lot of money as well. You know, I mean, I I can't even imagine how much money this whole thing must cost because I'm not a lawyer, I have no idea but you would think that if they had all this evidence, that they would just show us I mean, they're showing us a little bit, why show Why show a little bit at all, if you're not going to show everything, you know, why Why do we see these funny little fuzzy pictures of them walking around, Boston? that's not enough, show us everything, show us what you've got, we are hurt, we deserve it, the families of the victims, and the victims themselves, they deserve it and I think that someone has to step up and say, you know what, we love you, Boston. We love you, Boston Police Department, all of you. But there's something here that is not quite right. And uh, I don't know. I, maybe I'm the first person that's thinking this way, or maybe other people are fearful. It's a very 
uh, delicate, almost taboo. It's almost a place you don't want to go if you want to keep your friends. But I do happen to love my town, and this is a tough town. And I think it's tough enough to ask questions For and sure. not bow For down sure. to, you know. And it's not a matter of of you know the police departments. It's not. It's a matter of who's high, high up. It's you know that have the ability to to show us. You know, and, and right now it's like I look at how many people have resigned or, uh, you know, or advanced in this whole ordeal. There's so many people that were involved in this that are no longer part of this. And you think like, you know, starting this whole thing, starting sort of from Waltham, you know, one of the things that confused me the most as well was knowing that Tamara Tsunayev was, uh, you know, this Waltham triple murder, I'm sure you know about that Camelin is still there? Yeah, yeah. we are. Yeah, we're listening. Right. Well, he was best friends with, I think, uh, you Brendan know, Mass. Brendan Mass, or one of them, and, or all of them. And when they got murdered, he should have been suspect number one. And so I'm sure that they did a thorough investigation on him, uh, right? So they knew who he was. And at the same time, they had Russia given the warning the red flag, hey, uh, this guy's on our radar, he's doing some weird stuff, maybe you should check him out. So now that he's got two red flags against him, he's got the Waltham and he's got Russia, right? And so when the FBI came on our you know, TV and said, we need help identifying these two people that we don't know who they are, it's like, come on, guys, like you don't know who they are. Well, they are. absolutely knew you know? who they were, and they already went there. And if, yeah. if we could just kind of back up a little bit, you talked about you know city officials and people at the top. What do you think about... Yeah. Um, when the former uh, police commissioner in Boston uh, made the statement about we've identified the actors that were involved, and then he and then he had to wheel that back. He had to wheel that back, and and and, and it was a big, big kind of thing. Do you think that I, things like I, that are just yeah, kind of like a slip I, of the tongue? No, or? I think that that's an old school thing. Like you know, that's how my parents talk too. They're like, he's a bad actor, you know, and it had nothing to do with actor. I think that that was just an old school. Slang term. I don't think. Well, are you going for the angle, the Frank? That these people were actors, like the crazy. No, 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 no. I wasn't going there. I, I was just wondering. I was just oh, like, I, I, I was just trying to, you know, kind of get your idea, you know, get a feel for that, you know, because yeah. if, if you you watch it, and I don't think they were actors. I mean, I don't think they were crisis actors and stuff like that. No. I mean, there's people that died, and you know, and there's people that lost limbs and and, and, I think and that's, I, I think families that are suffering Mary because was of saying it. Saying earlier it was so important that that that's the reason we want to know. It's this isn't like we're trying to create something we there's all these weird things about this and people actually got hurt and this affected our home this is right. our home yeah. and the most patriotic right. thing exactly. you can do is ask these questions and care exactly and not right. you know be worried about where it takes you if i'm wrong on something well, it's okay yeah. to be wrong it's like information is power right and if they are withholding information they are keeping the power away from us and I would think that they would want their city to be empowered and want everyone to know exactly what happened and be on the same team and the same page. And I feel like the public are alienated from a lot of information. And I think that we're better than that, that the, that the residents of Boston are strong and not just, you know, strong in the form of waving a flag and bowing down to to every authority that walks by. You know what I mean? They're all people. Sure. And I do think that... You know, people can make mistakes. And, you know, one of the, uh, a few friends of mine, they're like, all right, smarty pants, you know, we think you're nuts. But they hear me out because they're like, you've never done anything like this before. I'm like, I know I have it. And they kind of, you know, they're like, well, tell us a little more then. We don't really. So, you know, they're like, the main question at the end of the day really is why. Why would this happen? Why, you know, why would anything like this happen? And I can only tell them I don't know. And the only thing that really makes any kind of sense to me is that there, there was a drill, uh, some kind of a drill that went wrong. And that at the end of it, whatever went wrong, I don't know. But somebody had to cover their butt, and they followed a narrative as it kind of went along, and they wrote a script or something, and they had to cover their butts. I think that there was some kind of a mistake or there was somebody with an agenda that might have known that there was some kind of a drill. Uh, and and I, there are bad guys out there. No and doubt. I, and it's ab- absolutely not the Boston Police Department. I mean, they did, they did an amazing job. They did their best. But I think higher, higher up, there was something 
that went wrong. Well, and it's a very hush hush situation. No one wants to talk about it. It's embarrassing. If it's if it is in fact something other than what we what we've been told, and I think that it's better to keep an open mind. I mean, a lot of people just want to go, oh, my God, I don't want to go there, because once you ask one question, a million other ones come tumbling in. The rabbit hole. Yeah. But, yep. but at the same time, what always, always needs to be defended is our Constitution and our rights to for free speech and free um, opinion and to ask questions. That's what this country is all about. We've fought for that Constitution, and you can't just wimp out and go, I don't know, you know, I, I, I've got the Kardashians to follow, and that's good enough. Mm-hmm. It's not good enough. <laughs> you know, we are better than that. Definitely. And that's, that's how I feel. And we should be in Boston, especially with our history, all the stuff we've been through, all the stuff we've seen. Um, why did you decide to come on the show today and speak out? I know that you are, had some trepidation. Why, why did you decide to speak up on this today? Um, because I know I'm right, <laughs> and I feel that it, I feel it's important, and I don't feel like I'm going in any kind of weird territory that it would offend anybody. You know what I mean? Like my dad and my brother were both firefighters. My uncle Bobby was a steady. You know what I mean? I'm proud of where I come from, and I, uh, you know, I, I want to. Just, just keep that going. I think we should all keep that going and all ask questions and 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 do it and ask these questions for the victims. Yes. There's too much we don't know, and we need to know it, and we need to know it soon. And enough fiddling around with the jury, with the, finding the jury. You know, just get on with it. Yeah, absolutely. Do your job. You know, O'Toole, do your job. And uh, we're not we're not taking it. Yeah, he seems there are like people, he's a... There are people out here like me, just regular citizens, that have this on their minds. And, uh, and enough is enough. If you have to move it, move it. Um, and, you know, the whole thing now, I, the latest I heard were Catholics aren't going to be uh, participating. It's just like crazy. Yeah, Come for on. the jury. Yeah, they don't support the death penalty, yeah. so that would, they, they won't let them. I'm, I'm glad it. they got rid of the the, the the jerk who got up there, and not like a jerk like us. Yeah. <laughs> an idiot. A jerk this, with this, an E. This guy goes on the jury, or was it a girl? I don't even know. But they were like, whatever juror number it was, was like, I want to do it because I want to be, the, you know, my, my roommates <laughs> will think it would be cool to execute this kid. Yeah. Like, like they were like, really? That's awesome. Really? Awesome. Go back yeah. to playing Call of Duty, I, buddy. Yeah, he, he thinks he's like in a Star Wars movie or something. It's like, you know. He, yeah, I don't know. I don't it. it really does seem like a movie. It's too much like a movie, but unfortunately, it, it's real, and it happened. And I think it's up to the citizens of Boston and this country to take a little bit of a closer look at what really happened and, you know, uh, who, what, why. They have information. Um, the, you know, the Weebly site, the Boston Weebly site also has a lot of information. There are people that have been doing a lot of work and, you know, they're, they're not these nutty, uh, teeny bopper fans of yeah, exactly. the kid. You Tim know what I mean? They're, no, they're, it's real stuff. I mean, Russ Baker is a real serious journalist, investigative journalist. He's written a, the most comprehensive book on the, on the Bush family. And, uh, you know, the, the hidden stuff that goes on with that family, it's really out in the open. He compiled it all. He's worked for New York Times, you know, all these major publications. It's the real deal. Mm-hmm. They're really backing it up. Um, the last thing I wanted to ask, Mary Lou, because uh, I know you have a new CD coming out. <laughs> What's going yeah, on with that? Yeah. You're playing shows again, too, right, aren't you? Yeah, I probably will be um, playing some shows. But, yeah, I, I do have a CD. And this is like career suicide. Hello. You know, <laughs> no, whatever. it's not. You know, I, well, I don't know. I, I think everyone <laughs> should go out and buy your CD if they agree with, you know, what you had to say today and, and prove you wrong that this but, isn't Yeah, this, this really, you know, it's just a tiny thing. It, you know, uh, it's got nothing to do with that. Um, as you know, it was about two or three weeks ago that I, I just thought that what you guys were doing was really ballsy. And I thought, yeah, this is cool, you know, and it's not hurting anyone. Um, there's, you know, I, I think of these poor victims and I've seen, I can only imagine what they're going through. I, I mean, I went through my own, uh, personal physical trials last year. You know, I, I broke a lot of bones. I had a terrible accident. And that's regardless, but so I can, I can only imagine. 
And so if those people get upset about what some of the people are doing and, and the questions that they're asking, it's pretty much for them that, you know, they're not doing it because they're losers and they have no job, you know, get a job or whatever, get a life. It, it's like these people do have lives. I know some of these people, and uh, they believe very strongly in supporting the Constitution and, and looking at this and, and not just believing every single thing that we're told uh, and, and following an agenda that doesn't really seem to add up or make sense. But more questions need to be asked, and I know that when you do that, you fall into a massive rabbit hole, and it could go on and on and on, but at least somebody cares. Absolutely. And not say, hey, wait a minute. We are the Young Jerks. It's uh, WEMFradio.com. Uh, we had some phone calls earlier. If people want to call in, I know that uh, we had a few... Dokar supporters, uh, Sarna, if, if uh, you want to call in and ask us a question or ask Mary Lou a question, this is the time to do so, 617-500-7100. If we get any calls right now, we'll take them real quick. Um, Mary Lou, I want to thank you again so much for coming on today and <laughs> sure, spending so sure. much time with us. Um, thank what is you. The, yeah, what thank is the name of the much. new CD that you're putting out? <laughs> It's actually, it's called Backstreet Angels, and uh, it's going to be, it's throughout uh, Valentine's Day. There's a Valentine's Day song on it, and, oh. and, it, and it's good. You know, I did a Kickstarter, and everybody, I had a lot of supporters. It was amazing, and it's taken a very long time to make, and, and it's cool. It's a really good record, and I'm really, really proud and happy, happy with it. That's awesome. Um, but I just want to say one last thing to anyone from Watertown that might be listening, that... Uh, you know, please pay attention to this because this trial probably won't involve Watertown. And if they're expecting it to, they should pipe up now and demand uh, information and demand an investigation because if they're thinking everything will come out in trial, it won't. It won't you're and right. they've got to demand that uh, the evidence. Uh, be proven and it, it to be like a normal fair trial. Why yeah. they're saying Watertown is not re- relevant and why Cambridge isn't relevant. I mean, God, Collier got shot. He- oh, no, we lost her again. Do we have Hello? another telephone call there? Hello? Hello? Oh, hey, how's it going? Hi, who's calling? Wakina. Hey, your name's Kina? It's Wakina. Wakina. Hi, do you, uh, you want to weigh in? I think we lost our uh, guest, but. Do you want to weigh in? Uh, yeah, I was just listening to her, too. I just I have a few questions that I would really want to answer. I'm from Buffalo, New York, and I've been following this case since it started. So I'm kind of curious to know what happened with Daniel Morley as well as Derek Merritt, the police officer, who had um, bombing equipment in their possessions. So I'm kind of wondering what's going on with that. You know, they're not being told, or we're not being told anything about their cases. They've been closed out to the public because I have friends here in Boston. I don't even know about that. Yeah, tell us. You you know, know, actually, actually, you know what? We're we're uh, we're running out of time. We have some other guests. We did go very long with uh, Mary Lou, and we do want to bring in the other guests. Uh, We appreciate your call. Uh, You know what? I would like you to do if if you could send us a message on Facebook because I'm not aware of that. And maybe Mary Lou is. I'm sure she might. Or or, um, you know, Mr. Baker, we have a bunch yeah. of people who are interested in this, so why don't you send us a message? We'd very much appreciate it. Do you know our Facebook okay, page? Have uh-huh. you seen us on Facebook? Are you still there? You can't miss us. It's it's just go to Facebook and then search for The Young Jerks. The Jerks has a, a U instead of an E, and you'll find us. Thanks thanks for calling. All right. Uh, we are The Young Jerks. We are on WEMF Radio. I want to thank again Mary Lou Lord. New CD is Backstreet Angels. Coming out on Valentine's Day. Buy it. Yeah, Check buy it, it. Download it, you know. And thank her for doing this today. Yeah, for uh, sure. You know, if you were listening today and you supported this, thank her. Thank her for uh, taking the time. And just be open-minded. You know, I think that's really what she was trying to impart to people, you know. Look at all the facts, be open-minded, and make your decision from there. You know, don't just believe what 7 News told you or, you know, whatever. You know, Fox or whatever your poison is. Exactly. Ask so, yeah. questions. Mm-hmm. But uh, we're the young jerks, and... uh we went for a little while there. With yeah, we're, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with uh, which the guys from Salem, doctor. Witch Doctor, and witch Healthy Heady Lifestyle. Maybe give away some tickets yeah. to the New England Cannabis Convention and, and talk uh, about medical marijuana, the bills, uh, the laws. Smokes. We'll get right into it. Come back. That's right. Young Jerks. You mess.